how to use oracle cards to communicate with animals. I read cards uh, mainly intuitively or through the booklet. And in this video, I want to show you that you can also do the same. Hi, I'm the Outdoor Witch, animal communicator, energy healer, outdoor lover, and owner of several animal friends. October is here, the month of the witches, and uh, I felt called to do uh, some different videos for the rest of the month. Um, and so I want to share with you how I use Oracle cards to communicate with animals and how it works and how you can also do this. But before diving into the topic, I just want to stress that I'm not a professional tarot reader or oracle cards reader. Um, yet I've been using them for many years now. I usually use cards to enhance my intuition, clarify a situation or channel information uh, from the animal I want to communicate with. So let's start with the when. When do you use oracle cards to communicate with animals? It can be because you are too involved in the situation. Uh, maybe you feel too close to the animal or you are too emotional about the situation. It's usually with your own pets. I personally use that when I'm working on my own animals because often it's really hard to get a clear mind uh, to get into that neutral observer state before you work. So using the cards help a lot. And I also do it when I work with the animals of my close friends and relatives. But you can also use them when not much is happening with the animal. Well, like you're trying to do um, classic communication and you don't get that much information. Or you feel like it's not very fluid, you don't get much through. Sometimes I also use it when I feel like I need a, uh, a backup or I want a confirmation about some information I channeled uh, before. And sometimes you can also just feel like you want to use the cards. Uh, it happens to me on a regular basis where I'm just like drawn to use the cards instead of doing a more uh, psychic uh, communication. I think it's also quite fun and it has a more tangible, more practical side. And I think it's also, it's good when you are a beginner because you get like something to read, something tangible to read from. So that's the reason I would use them. Uh, just think of them as a tool and you can use them whether you are a beginner or a pro or more advanced at animal communication. Uh, yeah, it's just another tool to, another way to get information from animals. Now, to what situation can you apply it? Uh, actually, you can basically use the cards for any information you want to get from an animal. And that animal can be alive or in another dimension. It can also be a spirit animal or an animal that you consider as your guide or one of your guides. So how to proceed? I like, as I said, to read the cards both uh, from the booklet or intuitively. And by booklet, I mean this little book that you would get uh, with your deck of cards. I get different ones, uh, like this one, well, this deck that comes from Finland. Actually, but then it will depend on the situation. Sometimes I just go for the booklet only and sometimes only for the intuition, the way I read the cards. Um, I don't think there's any strict rule there, uh, but I will come back on this later. So there are mainly two spreads that I like to do is the three card spread and the six cards spread. Um, and I use them on different situations for different reasons that I'm going to explain here. I usually use the three card spread when I have a rather straightforward question to ask the animal. Um, it can be for daily issues or um, or let's say down to earth issues, yeah, more earthly matters. For instance, it can be for an animal that is gone for many days, it can be for a cat who's peeing on the carpet, or 
you know, some kind of recurrent uh, issue that the owner or the animal ha are facing. But I can also use it if I want to ask the animal, for instance, what he's thinking of a situation, and I just want a simple answer. So I'm going to just uh, draw three cards and that's going to be it. It can be if I want them to have a short message for their persons or yeah, their opinion on the situation. So it would be for something rather simple or quick, like a straightforward message from them or a straightforward question I have for them. Now for a more complex uh, topic or more spiritual matters, then I would go for the six uh, tarot spread or six card spread. And um, I will do an example of that six uh, card spread on the next video. So you will have a live example on a real topic um, with that kind of spread. I like that spread because it gives a fuller picture on a more complex situation. You can also go more into the details of a situation. So usually I will pull the cards from the same deck. Like I would put six from that one, for instance, or six from that one. Uh, sometimes I use the runes as well. I actually like this deck a lot because I've been using it for many years. And I feel like it's a real tool now. I, I really understand them. I, I like the drawing. So that's, yeah, that's my go-to. But I also like uh, to use some different ones sometimes. And it would really be like, which deck do I want to use today? for that situation, for that animal. So usually I pull the cards from the same deck and what I tend to do is also draw like one card from this one and one card from that one. If I want to have a specific message from the animal or just like, you know, asking them, uh, do you have any message you want to share your person or is there something else you would like to add to that situation? And that's why I would pull two other cards. So usually I do this, a three or six tarot spread, and then I would pull two other cards from two other decks. But honestly, I don't think there's any strict rules here. Um, you know, we are, we are dealing with intuition, with spirituality, and it's more about listening to yourself, to your heart, and uh, just go for what is calling you. If you feel more like using three different decks and pull one card from each, do so. There's Honestly, there's no strict rules on how to do the spread and uh, which deck to use. Just know something, you can't get this wrong. If you feel called to do from all the same deck, do so. If you feel called to use different cards, do so. And yes, I guess there are some rules. I'm actually going to share some with you. But now regarding the way you do the spread and which cards you pull from which of the deck you like to work with, um, in my opinion, there's no rule there. So now on the technique itself, I indeed think there are some rules in order to get good and accurate information. So the first one is get into that relaxed and neutral state of mind. You can do it through breathing techniques or any relaxation or meditation technique you like to use. You can also go to my um, neutral observer visualization to do this. I put the link below that video. Um, it's also a really good way to get into that neutral state of mind. And so it's like you need, you, you can't be bogged down with all the things going on or all your worries to, to get clear information. So it's like, you know, just becoming as neutral as you can uh, before you ask the cars. The next step is to think of the question you have for your animal and keep that question in mind as you're shuffling the cards. So you really don't have to be a pro. I'm not, so I'm not going to show you the way I shuffle. But it's just about really having this question in mind as you're touching the cards and you're mixing them and you're shuffling them. So really keep your question in mind and shuffle the cards the best way you can. 
So step three then, once you've shuffled the cards, thinking of your animal and that question you have for them, just pull three cards or six if that's what you've chosen. And as you do so, don't question yourself. There are many ways you can draw these cards. You can decide beforehand that you're gonna you're gonna take the three first one, you know, on top of the pile. That's a way to do it, or the three from the bottom. The way I like to do it is just I I spread the cards in front of me and then I pull three of them. Just feel and do as you feel called to. So if for you it's better to shuffle and decide that you're gonna take the three first ones on top, do so. If you feel like you want to take the three bottom ones, do so. And if like me, you like to shuffle and then just pick the three that are calling you, you feel called to draw, just do that. But the rule here is not to doubt yourself. When you've decided on a technique, on a method, just draw the cards and don't doubt it. Don't doubt your action. Don't doubt, don't question what you're doing. Just know that you can't get wrong. The message you're supposed to get is going to come through. So whether you've decided to pull the three there or in the middle or whatever, or randomly, just go for it and don't question it. Just believe me, the message is going to come through. The message you're supposed to, to get from that animal is going to come through as you pull the cards. And for me, this is key. I've noticed that every time I start doubting what cards I'm pulling, um, my readings are totally messy and the communication just leads nowhere. That's the only place where I think there's a rule is like, don't question, don't doubt yourself as you draw the cards. Now onto the interpretation. So this could be an entire topic for another video, of course. But just quickly here, um, there's two ways, as I said before, you can either read the booklet, so you, you pull the card and you go to the booklet, see what the author had in mind when um, they wrote that card. I've personally done this for many years and I got really good results as well. I think it's a really good way if you're not very confident or you're a beginner or also you feel called to read actually what's the meaning of that card. Then you can also decide to read the cards in a more intuitive way and by this I mean to, to look at the card and see what it means to you, uh, how you feel when you look at it, if there's any symbol or number that is significant to you. So it would be more personal to you, how you interpret it and see it and what you understand from it. So you can either use both methods or just one or the other. Um, I guess reading the cards intuitively is a bit more advanced so I won't recommend this if you're only starting with this method and you just want to give it a try. But if you're doing this for a while or you, yeah, if you have more experience already and you want to have a more personal message to the cards, uh, go for the intuitive way and you'll get really a lot of information. What I like to do when I draw the cards, I usually decide that I'm going to read both, like the booklet and intuitively, or I'm, going, I'm always stating that I'm going to read only the booklet or only intuitively. Sorry, I had to stop because part is, my dog is here and she's also commenting on what I'm saying. Um, yeah, so what I like to do is before doing the reading or before uh, drawing the cards, I like to be very clear in my mind that I'm going to read both ways, like intuitively and through the booklet, or only one or the other. It's as if I'm sending the message out there to the animal that please send me information that I can get through you know, the booklet or information that I can understand through reading intuitively. I hope I've been clear enough and that you get some information so you can actually try because I think it's the best way to understand is to give it a try and uh, I think it's a very interesting way to communicate with animals, it's a really good tool, uh, I'm really enjoying it and it's quite a fun actually so 
because we don't have to be that serious about all this and I think it's yeah I like it so uh, just give it a try in the next video as I said I'm gonna do a six um, card spread on a very specific topic um, with a real case so we can have an example together and uh, Please send me your feedback, I always appreciate to read it. And if you like that video and my other videos, please give them a thumbs up. Subscribe if you like, feel like it. And uh, don't forget to share if you think that videos can interest and be useful to other animal lovers and owners. All right, so bye for now. And I wish you a wonderful time whenever you're watching this video. It was the Outdoor Witch and see you next time. Bye bye.